Hi everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge and welcome to something I'm going to try doing. Um, I'll be honest, content, it's not that I ha don't have a list of videos to make, it's that I haven't had the time lately, which is really frustrating for me because you know I have channel members counting on me and I have you guys wanting content and I know it seems like I've had just as much content as normal, but it's actually been a lot to keep up with and so I want to get back into doing some vlogs sorry this is shaky let's see if I can put my hand down here we go and so I decided I want to try doing some 24 hour vlogs so these won't be necessarily like um like I'm sprinting or they're not for anything in particular but I have a few days before um Pharaoh Feb readathon starts which of course I'm going to be vlogging when I read fantasy and everything um, but I wanted to show you guys like what I read in a day period. So today is one of the days where I'm actually up early and like ready to go because I have to go get a root canal. So much fun. And I have a bit of a lighter work day. So yeah, I thought I would just like record what I'm reading and like so you can see how much gets done in a day because in January it's trending towards me having read 70 books, I will definitely hit 70 if maybe not more, which is on par with the most I've ever read. Like last year in April, I also read 70 books and then I was around the 60s. Um, January has just been super charged for me. Um, but yeah, so it's 8 a.m. I'm just about to get ready. I have to go, like I said, go get a root canal. So that's not great. Um, and I'll probably not do much the rest of the day, to, depending, because of the medicine. I'm not allergic to it or anything, but I tend to get a little bit sick after I've had it. So, I'm going to be dealing with that anyway. Not fun. But, yeah, what am I in the middle of? So, I'm in the middle of... I'm in the middle of The King of Shadows, which is the first book in Amelia Wilde's um, King of Shadows trilogy, which she has these three trilogies. And The Devil in the Deep Blue Sea actually fits into this trilogy, which I recently just read. Um, and that was a Poseidon retelling. So this one is a Hades and Persephone retelling. Um, and I've just started it. So what happens is we have Persephone, who is like a prisoner of her mother. Um, and this one is a, that's the garbage man going by. This one is a direct retelling the same way that like a touch of darkness is where their names are Hades and Persephone's. Well, his name is, his name is Luther Hades and then her name is Persephone. And so at the beginning of this, she's escaping from her mother and she has this guy who helps her. Now I have a theory that he was like a fluffer of some kind because he ends up getting her to escape her mother's land um, and get onto a train. Well, this train is like owned by Hades. And I think that it is him like kidnapping her to get at her mother, which Hades and Demeter don't get along so well. That's part of the mythology. And so that's as far as I am is that Persephone left and got on the train. And then Hades showed up with his dog, <laughs> his big scary dog. And he almost murders the guy who brought her there because he just thinks this guy's a waste of space. And I like it because he immediately is, like, in awe of her beauty. And he's like, oh, my God, she's more beautiful than I ever thought. And, like, um, he just wants to touch her, basically, is what he's thinking. And she's like, please let me go. Let him live and let me go. And he's like, why should I let him live? And she's like, I'll do anything that you want. And he's like, gotcha. So that's where I'm at with that. Then... I still have half of Bound by the Past to get through, so I'll probably be listening to that. I also have a book that I got halfway through during the Historical Romance Readathon, and I lost some esteem, which is um, The Highlander's English Bride, so I might listen to that. Um, I also have a mafia book that I'm halfway into called Unholy Intent. So those are the four books that I am in the middle of, and I thought I would just you know, pop in with you guys and see how this turns out, um, to show you what a day of reading, you know, obviously I'm not going to stay up the whole 24 hours, but I do basically read from 8am until midnight. So 
you know, it's like a solid 16 to 18 hours of reading that I do. And I figured I would just bring you along with me and see how it goes. Hello. So it's later in the day. We've already done the root canal. So much fun. Glad that's done. I'm actually am glad it's done because that tooth was starting to hurt a little bit. So it feels good to have that done and everything. So that was the wind track that I listened to, which is funny that I listen to winter storms when I literally live in Fargo and we have storms all the time, but it's my lunch break. Um, I finished filming two videos today that I did get filmed, which was awesome. Um, I worked for a little bit and then I'm just hanging out and I'm actually reading a little bit. So I'm reading King of Shadows right now. I am 60 pages in, so I'm like a third of the way done with this one already. I was also earlier listening to The Queen of All That Lives, which is the third and final book in the um, in that trilogy by Laura Thalassa, The Queen of All That Dies trilogy. Um, it's really good, but one of the things that I was noticing is like, so I read the second book the other day. I listened to it all in one day because I had it up at about two times speed. And the thing of it is, I'm getting sick of the hate that the main character has, right? Um, this King Lazuli, he loves her so much and he's a bad guy, right? He's a bad guy, but I am more along the lines of, I like when a heroine comes to love the bad guy for what he is and maybe he changes a little bit. Maybe he doesn't, but she has consistently hated this man for all three of the books. And now I'm almost a third of the way into the third book. And she still, she, she'll she say like, oh, I love him, but I hate him. And she still consistently hates this guy three books in. Meanwhile, he has literally moved heaven and earth for her again and again and again. And so I don't really get the point of the author to have her still hating him because it's exhausting. Like I said that in one of my updates is like, I love the sexual tension between the two of them. And I love how he loves her hate. But she, there's always another thing that happens for her to hate him all over again. And it's just getting really frustrating at this point because it's like, I, I love the care, the, the hero. Like I really do. Um, and the world that we live in, it's not like there's any quote unquote good people anymore. So it's not like he's hurting the innocent or things like that. Like, she just still hates him because he killed her parents, even though one of them was incidental. And the second one, her father was, like, causing a lot of problems. So, I don't know. I'm just frustrated with the hate for it. And, like, whereas the first one was definitely a five star for me, the second book, her feelings didn't evolve in a way that I like. And it also, the second book also had one of my trigger warnings for me, which is uh, miscarriage. Um, and the way I'm, yeah, it was, it was pretty tough to see that happen. Um, yeah, especially because I knew that it was going to be used as a plot device. Like when she got pregnant, I knew that her being pregnant is going to be like her losing the baby is going to be used as something like I just knew it. I just could tell because of the way the author was writing that I'm okay with like a pregnancy being used as a plot device to bring people like, but when I know a pregnancy is introduced just to result in a miscarriage, I'm not like here for it at all. So there was a lot of hate happening in that second book, but like it ended on a cliffhanger. I was like, oh my God, I have to keep reading. But still, the main character, we're three books in. She's been in the relationship with this man for a pretty, like, I can't, I don't want to spoil the situation, but, like, she's been around him a significant amount of time, and she still hates him. And so I'm like, okay, lady, either do it or move on, right? Like, I don't know. So that one's frustrating. Um, this King of Shadows, I don't know where this is going. Um, we're 30% into it and Hades is really obsessed with her and he wants to keep her forever. But I don't know if that's just to sexually debase her and stuff or what the bigger plot is. So 
This is only the first book in a trilogy and I'm really liking it. So there's kind of my midday update. I get most of my reading done in the evening because like I do still work during the day. Um, but I'm also waiting for um, a book haul to get here, which is my other Hades and Persephone books that I read recently. I ordered them in paperback. And so once those get here, um, I might do a book haul because I've been like waiting to do a book haul. Um, then we have a farewell party for my manager. And then once that is all done, I should be a good girl and go to the gym tonight. Like I need, I should go tonight because I won't be able to go on Friday. But I also don't want to go. I want to read, but we'll see. I have a couple, obviously I have a couple audiobooks going so I could read. I also really want to listen to the next book in the Nightwing series by Juliet Cross because I really like the first one. And I think the second one could be even better. So I also might download that audiobook to listen to because that was a pretty quick audiobook for me last night. So yeah, this is what I go through every day. I like oscillate between so many books and then when workday ends, I end up plowing through a bunch. So we'll do it. Hey guys, so check in. Number one, a little bit tipsy because we just had a farewell party for my manager on Teams and I may have drank a absolute... Paloma and I'm a little tipsy but during that meeting I had some packages show up and a couple of these I know what they are because I've been an eagerly anticipating them as I said in the last clip but then one of these like I don't know so you know I love doing unboxings on these so let's go ahead and dive in let's see what we got Ooh! oh my gosh it's so pretty so here's a touch of darkness absolutely gorgeous I've already read this one and I had to own it it's so beautiful it's just so pretty this is a Hades and Persephone's retelling I think the other two are in this one so let's open that one next. yes beautiful oh my gosh so we have a touch of ruin which is the sequel god these books are so beautiful Sometimes the fates weave ruin. They're so perfect. And then this is, this is the Hades retelling of um, the first one. Man, they have all this fuzz all over, which is really irritating. Oh, it popped inside, that's why. So I'll have to vacuum that. This is a game of fate. And I actually haven't read this one yet. Um, so I'm very excited to read his POV on this and see how I feel about it. So this is a game of fate. This one's shiny. I wish it was matte like the other two, but that's okay. So then I don't know what's in these. Let's open this one. I think I know what's in this one. This was a, where's my knife at? This one is a new release that I'm very excited to have. Oh, it's so pretty. It is a vow so bold and deadly. This is book three in a Curse So Dark and Lonely series. I went ahead and ordered it. Ah, uh, it's so pretty. Look at the map inside. Gosh, I don't know when I'm going to get to this. I'm going to try to get to this during Pharaoh Feb. I probably won't be super patient, but... I'm so ready to read this and to see what happens to my poor babies who are making bad decisions. <sighs> it's so pretty. So then this is three small ones and I don't know what this is. I don't remember ordering this. So let's see. Okay. There's notes. Try to find the Oh my God. They're from Brie. It says, these covers are so fun. Thank you so much for picking out such a great, <laughs> such a great historical romance read on TBR for me from Brie. Oh, Brie. <laughs> See what they are. <gasps> yes. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. So she sent me this trilogy. Um... I can't remember which one's first. I think the husband trap is the first one. 
and I just remember being told about these. Um, and it's about this woman named Violet who always longed to marry this one guy, except he's set to buy mar to marry her twin sister. So she refused, but her sister doesn't want to go through with the ceremony. So Violet finds herself walking down the aisle and taking vows in her sister's place. Soon Violet is a high society wife trying to keep her real identity a secret while living out the fantasies of her wildest dreams. Adrian thinks he knows exactly what he's gotten himself into. Jeanette may be flighty and well a bit self-involved, but she's the picture-perfect wife to carry on the winter's name. Yet this marriage of convenience brings the groom more than he bargained for when his when he finds his sweet, innocent wife surprising him at every turn. So this is called The Husband Trap. And then there's The Wife Trap. And so this one's about the twin sister from this. Um, and she's like in exile for having like not married the Duke instead. So that's super cool. And then there's The Wedding Trap. Which I guess she is Violet's best friend. So, and this one's called The Wedding Trap. So, yeah, I've had these on my TBR because someone mentioned them to me. And so, Brie sent them to me as a gift. Thanks, Brie. Oh, my gosh. So, that was a fun book haul. I still have some more coming tomorrow as well. But I'm going to go take myself some bookstagram pictures because those are gorgeous. Whoop, whoop. Okay, so check in. We are reaching the point of the night where I really kind of go hog wild with everything. Um, so it's about six. Um, I'm done with work, done with dinner, um, watching a bit of a uh, crime solver YouTube or whatever. I'm watching Stephanie Harlow. I love her videos. I love true crime. Um, well, I don't love it, obviously, but I like learning about it and discovering things about it. So reading update, I did finish King of Shadows and I wasn't too thrilled with it. I think I'm going to give it a three and a half star. Um, I think the thing of it is, is that I love Hades and Persephone retellings, right? I talked about this, but the thing with this one is I like to feel a lot of compassion for Hades and I'm not feeling where this Hades is coming from. Besides that, he wanted to take something from Demeter. And I don't know why. Like, his motivations for taking her are not set up. And then it's clear in this that, like, Persephone has a submissive bent to her. She really is liking a lot of the degrading things and, like, dommy things that he's doing to her. Um... And I respect that. That's fine. It's cool. Great. Love that kind of vibe. But also, where did she get those feelings from? Because her mom has completely kept her from all things sexual. Like, she's never even, like, watched porn. There's a there's a mention at the beginning of it that, like, she knows where babies come from. But, like, that's about it. So, I just don't know. I don't know where to go with that. Not sure. Not sure. However, it had a really good cliffhanger for this one. The same way that like A Devil in the Deep Blue Sea had a really intense cliffhanger. That was why I was like annoyed because I didn't realize that it was going to be a trilogy. I thought it was just a standalone, but I'm <clears throat> intrigued, but not enough to jump into it immediately. Like I need to wait a little bit. I'd actually rather read A Game of Fate, but I'm going to save it on that. Um, so I have a couple options here. I am a third of the way through the queen of all that lives. I also really want to read Windburn, which is the second book in the, um, Juliet Cross trilogy that I'm reading right now. Really want to check that out because that is only a four hour audiobook and at two times speed it's only going to be a two hour audiobook because those ones are all novella length and she said that this trilogy this like novella trilogy leads to her favorite trilogy which is like darkest heart is the first one in that one so i really want to take a bath um and then i also did my spinner wheel to pick a kindle unlimited book and I did it right before I filmed this clip. And I actually ended up with Sir, which is supposed to be a um, 
a male, male, male BDSM light story, it says. So this is by N.R. Walker, who I really like N.R. Walker. And this one is supposed to, it says this, it says, Founded over 400 years ago, Sanctus Infinitus Redemptio is a private and very elite society where dominance and submission are revered, steeped in tradition and excellence, every dominant and every submissive, and their pairing are selected with great care. When Hunter Vargo is brought into Sanctus, his need for strict dominance sees him paired with the wrong master, but only a short time later, mistreated and his trust broken, he's recalled and his collar removed. The Grandmaster knows it will take a special kind of dominant to restore the sub's faith and trust. Um, and then Sig Bruckner's world is perfect. He has a great job. He has a high standing within the Sanctus. And he has Levin, the very best submissive. When he's asked to take on a second sub, a young man with issues and a rule not to touch him, Sig's wood world is turned upside down. When his dominance, his patience, and self-control are tested, and when Sig's relationship with both subs are pushed past his limits, everything begins to unravel. Yet Sig knows every good Dom learns from their subs, and he's no exception. He might not be able to fix everything on his own, but perhaps the three of them together can fix it. So that one got recommended to me from my menage video. Um, I've only ever read one other, well, it was a series, but I've only ever read one other relationship that was a menage three M's together. Um, this one Hmm, I'm not a huge fan of, like, <laughs> I love BDSM, but I'm not a huge fan when it's, like, set around the club. Like, I more so like when I have a couple who goes to a club, but when it's literally they're set up through the club, I don't know how I feel. But I like that, that the one guy's limit is he wants to be a submissive, but without there being any touching. That's really interesting. So, this also is a pretty short book. So, what I think think I'm going to do, ooh, it has an author's note too. This is not a reflection of how true BDSM works. This is a pure fiction slash erotic fantasy. The society abides by its own rules and laws. Though safe, sane, and consensual still applies all members of the same world willingly, all relationships and sex are consensual. Ba, ba, ba. Hmm. All parallels to organized religion are coincidental. No disrespect intended. I wrote this because a very naughty little plot bunny wouldn't leave me alone. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Okay. All right. Okay, sorry. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, finish watching this episode of Coffee and Crime Time with Stephanie. And then I'm going to take a bath. And I'm probably going to listen to Windburn while I'm in the bath. Um... And then, sir, will be the next one I read. So maybe this will end up being a 24-hour where I get in three books would be great. Because I feel like that's a typical day for me when I don't have anything going on. I can get through three books. Normally, I get through a book during the work day. Um, and I mostly did that. I read a little bit of King of Shadows last night. But I didn't get a chance to listen to much at work today. Usually, I would have gotten through The Queen of All That Lives. But I just... I had too many other things going on where I couldn't just do that. So anyway, that's my thought process. Um, that's how my new spinner wheel works. This was a, this is a Kindle Unlimited option. So I made spinner wheels. Um, I'm going to talk about more of this in my weekly wrap up, which maybe you'll have already seen, or maybe I have no idea when these ones are going up, but I decided to make spinner wheels for pretty much all of my different TBRs. So basically every group on my Kindle that I have, I have a spinner wheel. And like as I pick a book and read it, I then replace it with a different one on my spinner wheel. And it's the coolest thing ever. Some of you probably already know how spinner wheels work, but this is a new thing for me. So yeah, I'm going to take my bath and listen to some Dragon Faded Mates because I really liked Soulfire. Just saying. But yeah, I'll check in again soon. All right, back here again. Um, when was the last clip? I was going to take a bath. So I did end up completely listening to Wind Burn. Um, and I loved it. I think, I think I liked it equally as much as the first one. I'm trying to like decide in my head which one I like better, but I really liked the stories in both of them. This one was the like damaged 
girl trope kind of like with daddy issues but I really love how Juliet wrote this character her name is Sorka because she totally owns that she has daddy issues and just likes to um fuck men all the time because when um Lucian Nightwing who is like the hero of this one he can tell that he has feelings for her. So this one also didn't have any POV from the hero this time. Whereas the first novella, there was some POV from the hero sometimes. So we knew that, like, we knew what it felt like for him to have a mate. And this time she didn't write any from his point of view. And being that it's such a short book, like these are all novella length, I was okay with that. Because now that we know what the feelings are and what the signs are of someone finding their mate. Hold on. I have my track playing and it's kind of loud. We now can recognize that in Lucian. Whereas we, we wouldn't have been able to recognize it in the first hero if we didn't have that. So I understood. I understand that choice being made um and I just really liked it they're just fun like they're just they're a fun time I really like the audio for them um and yeah I was able to finish it so it's 9 30 right now um and I think I might be able to get through two more books tonight we'll see when I was in the bath I did start sir um which I'm 11 percent in it's only a 250 page book and now that I'm not going to be distracted by anything, I say that my friends tend to distract me at night. This is the thing. I would get through a lot more books than I did, but I talked to some of you guys. I'm looking at you, Crystal and Jessen and Juliet, but it's okay because I enjoy talking with them. Oop, now I messed up my Zoom by doing that, but I of course love talking with everyone. I'm not saying I don't, but that will usually happen to me is I'll get in a voice message um, tirade with somebody and then be behind. I'm wearing my one of my cut shirts. I have All's Fair and Love and War, by the way. It's going good. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to read Sir now, um, which is the one that I had on my spinner. This is by N.R. Walker. And I was nervous to start it, but I'm glad. I love the spinner because... The way I was like is I was like, I'm going to try reading the first like two chapters. And if I'm not sucked into it, I'll like switch to something else so that I keep going. And I actually really like the setup. So the setup of this is there's the secret society of like gay doms and subs. Okay. It's been around forever and it's literally like a training program. So if you belong to this you start as a sub and you be trained and then you can become a dom if you want to or if you're meant to be a sub, it's fine. And anyway, we're coming into this society where there is this sub who has been, he's had his hard limits broken by his dom. Um, he literally has like one hard limit and his dom decided to break it because he is sadistic in a bad way. And so the grand master of this, you know, like, the president, the leader of this group, he finds out that this happened and he takes it very personally because he is involved in personally matching subs and doms together. Um, this almost feels like a fantasy world of subs and doms. It's very interesting, but it's at least a secret society. And I, I was driving with it because I love, I love books in BDSM that are very about everybody getting what they need out of it. Like this isn't just for sex. It's about if you need that dynamic for your mental health or for your peace of mind, or it's just something you enjoy. I love that. And this is totally all about that. And so this grandmaster is very upset that this happened. And so he calls on a former student who currently is a dom with one sub under him. And he wants to make sure that this sub who has had his trust broken, his hard limits were not obeyed, um, which is a big no-no anyway. And so he calls upon this dom that he trusts and asks him to take on a second sub, at least for a trial period to see if they get along together. And they're supposed to have a trial period of seven days with no sex, just with the, just, like, just with the, you know, 
dynamic part of it in place, not with any of the sexual part happening and stuff like that. So that's all as further as I got into it because I was just reading um, Windburn. And honestly, I really want to read Night. What's the next one? I really want to read Ju the, the third one in that trilogy because Juliet said it leads into her favorite series of hers. But I'm going to hold off because Sir is what came up in the spinner and I want to try to get through it. And if I get through that one, which it's 250 pages, I'll probably get through it pretty quick. Then I can start the third Juliet one and maybe we'll get through two more tonight. So anyway, that's the update for this. And oop, I'm getting messages now from some of my friends who like to keep me busy, but I will let you know when I finish this one or if I end up switching books. Okay, so one more clip tonight and then I'll wrap this up in the morning, I think, because I'm gonna get into bed and turn off the lights and read for a little bit. Um, so I did end up DNFing Sir, and here's my main reason for it. <sighs> Definitely had, didn't have to do with the mail, mail, mail stuff, because I love that. The more issue was that this is a 24-7 dynamic, and we're dealing with constant master-slave-slash-dom-sub situations, and I just, I can't mentally do it. And even though it's not overly dark, I still don't like those dynamics. I don't. I, I've read maybe one or two books that had a 24 seven dynamic that worked for me. So I, I made it to 50%. And then I was like, I get that like pit in my stomach where I'm just like, I don't like the headspace all the time. And so for me, that's when it's time to tap out, say my, pull my safe word and just back away because it's it's definitely a beautiful story it's one that is you know nr walker tells really beautiful stories and there's something really powerful being said it's just not working for me because i don't enjoy when we never leave the dynamic and one of the subs literally like can't handle not being in dynamic or he like freaks out and there is a place for a story like that, but it's not one that I enjoy because it's a lot of trauma and stuff that's put him in this place and having to crawl through that bit by bit because that's what this Dom is doing is he's being a really good Dom and working through those things with him. But like, I don't want to work through those things because I don't have those issues. So I had to DNF this at 50%. Thank you to whoever recommended it though, because it was a good recommendation. I just... If it wasn't a 24-7 dynamic or it wasn't the kind... Yeah, I just... I couldn't. Whereas, like, the other male, male, male I read, they had, like, they would break from scene. Like, there was BDSM elements in it, but we wouldn't live in it all the time. There was playtime and there was lifetime, and that one just had a little too much of it. So, what that means is I did spin my wheel again, and I got Dominion. And I think this is by... I can't remember the author's name, but this one is a MMF, um, and I think it's based on a club as well, which I didn't realize as well, but I think this one will be more, this one's two alpha males and a sub-female, and I usually like those situations better. Those are my favorite when there's two alpha males in a menage is my favorite, but I'm also listening to The Last Bit of Bound by the Past. So, um, I might either finish that or else read Dominion. So in the morning, I'll let you know which one I ended up doing and that'll be perfect because that'll have been 24 hours and then, yeah, you'll have seen like how I read so much and what it looks like and everything. So I hope this was fun, but we'll check back in in the morning. Hi everyone. So time to wrap this up. Oh my gosh, my hair is so wild. I did one of my, um, my like barrel curling things and it just got woof just out there and then they're never even and whatever but anyway it is the next morning it is 8 a.m and so I wanted to wrap this up because it's been 24 hours of reading and I wanted to let you know what I read after my last update last night so I had said that I had DNF'd sir I did end up finish listening to bound by the past because I was skipping around a little bit I here's the thing the way that the reading order of this series is 
I fucking love these books, obviously. It is a well-documented fact that I push and pedal these on everyone, and I love them. The thing is, the characters that Cora chooses to go back to, I understand why, because they're, like, the bosses, and I'm hoping that means that someday she'll go back to Nino and Serafina, too, because he's also a boss. But there's no way to not be frustrated with Dante and to not be on Serafina's side. And so when we go through this book, it's very heavily in Dante's point of view this time. And we, again, start back at the beginning of his relationship with Val and go all the way through it. This one covers 14 years of their lives together, um, which makes for a really disjointed story because this is basically a novella, but like it's not. It's a full-size book. But it skips around so much because you're seeing the events of all the previous books from his point of view. The same way we did in Luca's book. The same way we do in Nino and Chiara's book when we revisit them. And the, the difference being, I don't really care what Dante has to say. Like, this is supposed to be about him, like, betraying the outfit for the women in his life. And... So he has these deep feelings like we'll hear what he says to Val like in his words to Val he's like I love you and I love you more each day and that's very romantic it's fine but we don't get to see it like we don't see it in his actions quite the way we see it in the actions of like Luca so yeah I don't know it's just hard and it's also hard to go from reading Twisted Pride and Twisted Bonds to back to this one to have to see Serafina go through all that stuff again and whatever so this is like a 3.5 4 star but if you love Dante and Val like it might be higher for you but it just doesn't work for me the same way the things that are nice it's it's nice seeing Dante's point of view and seeing how like that he is very fiery and him and Val do some fun role-playing things the later on in their marriage and I really like that they have that bit of a DNS uh dynamic in their sex life as a I don't want to say older married couple but like a more mature married couple and I really like it. so I did finish that then I ended up reading 50% of Dominion um and I'm gonna DNF it today um this was one that I think was recommended to me on my Minaj video but this is an MFM I don't like MFMs I like MMF I like all the things to touch um, also, this was a stepbrother romance, which I don't got a problem with that at all. Um, this was the case of Alan, who was in love with his, is in love with his stepsister, but they haven't seen each other in eight years because eight years ago when he was like 17 or 18, they're the same age. He made a move on her and said, he's like, I'm in love with you. And she was like, no, even though she did have feelings for him, she was like, it's too complicated for me to love my stepbrother fair enough. And so she, they parted ways. Well, now she's back in, she's in his town. And so he is a part of this group of assassins. And so he has a friend named John and his friend, John, he asked his friend, John to watch her for him to make sure that she's safe. And it comes out that he has a thing for her, his stepsister. And John's like, it comes about that if they can convince her to share with them, then they will. So this is everything that I don't want out of a menage in one book. Plus they try to twist in some kinky stuff and it's just not working. So it was mostly a fail for me. Like this was, this was a fail for me and I made it to 50% last night and I'm like, nah. So that's what happens. This was 24 hours of reading. I don't even remember everything that I've read. I'll have to go back through my clips, but I'm pretty sure we got through two or three books. DNF'd a couple. That's how it works, man. That's how it works for me. But it was really fun. So now you can see kind of how my brain goes during a day. And now it's Friday and I need to get some work done. I need to do my monthly wrap up and get ready for the weekly wrap up tomorrow. And I'll need to film a book haul soon too. I'm waiting for a couple books to come in. But yeah, this is what a day typically can look like for me. Because in the evening I can just um, read, 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 read on the weekends. It's even more. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching this. Um, if you'd like to spend more time with me and know more about it, please check out channel memberships. Um, in about a week or so, we have our 
weekly faded friend chat that will be where you get to hang out with me and we'll chill out. Um, also, there are other fun benefits to that as well, as well as helping me choose some videos that I do. So go ahead and check that out. Thank you so much for watching. I put out new videos three to four days a week and you can watch some more of them right now. Bye.